Welcome to the Jack Hammer Radio Show. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. What up, what up, what up? Welcome to the Jack Hammer Radio Show. It's been a busy week. Uh, let me recap you with uh, what I want to talk about, which is Drake versus Meek Mill. This hottest beef that's going on in the hip hop rap community. Now, here's the thing on one hand, the blue corner we have Meek Mill, underground rapper out of Philly, who was pretty much irrelevant up until he started dating Nicki Minaj. And Nicki Minaj just sort of, you know, by default, by dating Nicki Minaj, people were kind of interested in who this cat was. And so, started getting a little bit popular. All right, this dude is straight out of Philly. Um, you know, that's I don't I, I don't know much about this cat. You know, and quite frankly, I never really paid attention to who he is. On the red corner, we got Drake. Uh, dude is always putting out bangers, hits, shaking hands with the counselor of uh, fucking Toronto this guy is the golden boy for Toronto the face of Toronto this guy is you know done a lot for his city you know not not really a thug but never claimed to be so let's break this shit down what the hell is going on as of today August 3rd uh, there have been three diss tracks that have been dropped Two from Drake and one from Meek Mills I'm going to break down every fucking thing that has happened up to, to this point And I'm going to give you my fucking opinion What I think about this shit Alright So first let's talk about Meek Mill Meek Mill like I said before Was pretty much irrelevant up until the point he started dating Nicki Minaj This dude was... No one knew who the fuck he was except Philly Cats. You know, this dude was an underground cat. People were calling him Meek Mills. No one knew. Um, Then, you know, by default, when you start dating the hottest chick in the game, you start to, by association, gain all her fans. Because here's the thing about Nicki Minaj's fans They're willing to support her She is like a queen to her fans It's like a cult And they're gonna do whatever they can to support her And if she's dating a dude Who is irrelevant up until the point that they were dating Her fans are gonna support this dude And that dude is Meek Mill. Motherfucking Meek Mills. Um, But anyways. She started dating him. And uh, he got a lot of popularity. Dude was straight. Hottest album in the country. You know, just going on tour. Living life. Now here's the thing. Dating Nicki Minaj is not a diss, you know. Riding on her coattails is not a diss. Because if she's willing to help, that's all that we look for in a girl. We want a girl. All of us want a girl that's by our side supporting us. And that's exactly what she's done. She's put them on. And, you know, that's that's what we want in a girl. That's what we want in a wife. Someone who's by our side to pick us up when we're down. To help us at all costs. And to a certain extent, that's what she's done. All right? So he drops his album. And this shit is hot. Selling out fucking everywhere. You know, everyone's copping his shit. But uh, that's not enough. That's not enough at all, man. You sell the number one album 
in the country and you're still not satisfied, there is something that is wrong with you, right? If you still, I mean, you know, maybe you want that, you have that hunger, that's what separates us. But if you still tripping and you got a number one album in the country, there is definitely something wrong. So in this album, he worked with Drake. They did a collaboration. He was featured in one of his songs. And so, uh, you know, Meek thought that they were homies. Meek was like tripping out because Drake didn't tweet. Didn't give him a shout out for his fucking album. So Meek was like, fuck it, man. I thought we were homies. You gonna do me like that? I'm gonna put you on blast. All right. Now, his I can see where he's coming from. You know, he's like, yo, we homies. If you're not helping me out, fuck it. You either ride with me or you die. So he had that type of mentality. So he's like, all right, cool. This this dude's not riding with me. I'm gonna put him on blast. This is a this is a lesson for the world to know. Like I'm a real street dude. I'm a gangster. If you ride with me and you don't help me out, you're not riding with me. Trying to trying to have that demeanor, throw out that vibe. Like hey, anyone that's riding with me got to help me out type deal. So he's like, "Cool, fuck it. You ain't riding with me then." Straight up blast Nick or a uh, fucking blast Drake all over Twitter. It's like, "Oh, Drake don't write his fucking raps." Oh, he has a ghostwriter and shit. And uh fucking the social media world just blew up after that they were like whoa that was crazy and at this point fans have not started picking sides yet you know the people have not started picking sides they were kind of in between they were like yo that's kind of fucked up me because uh when you were in jail drake was out here supporting you rocking the free meek meal shirts you know so that shit was fucked up and people were like, damn, this fool got no loyalty, you know. But uh, there was the other side of the coin where people were like, fuck, man. This dude is real, you know. This dude is real. Street gangster just calling people out. Saying that this dude don't write his own rhymes. And so that was the first, you know, that was the first shots fired, you know. Meek Mill was... You know, it was kind of even at this point. You know, the fans were kind of split. The people were like, kind of like, you know, part was on Meek's side, part was part was on Drake's side. And then, after you know, a couple days or so, I think it was a couple days, things started simmering down. Drake released a diss track. I think this might be the first diss track that Drake released that gained this much popularity. This was like a high profile beef. You know, usually there's some beef, it's kind of small by the wayside. This was a high profile beef because, number one, Meek was really hot at this point. You know, he was, he, like I said, he, was, he had the best album, best selling album. And Drake was always on top, so. Drake released Charged Up and to be honest with you I listened to it maybe one time very forgettable track yeah there were some disses here and there but it was very average it was very mediocre and uh, people you know it, it people heard it you know they were they they were kind of indifferent it was still kind of zero zero at this point right and then a couple days go by. Drake releases the killer, the ender of all beings, the track that the whole world was talking about. He released the track 
back to back. And this was a track that was... I was asleep when he was released this track. I woke up to social media blowing up about how Drake just killed Meek Mill with this track. I listened to it and I concur. It was hot, right? Straight up diss, no subliminal disses. Um, lyrics was just on another level, you know, just like very, very specific things that you cannot uh, rebuttal. You there was no counter for the things he said. Is it a world tour or your girl's tour? Meek Mill is on a tour with his girlfriend, Nicki Minaj. And um, he was opening up for her, right? This was her tour, okay? You can't counter that. What are you really going to say to counter that? Because it was true. Drake dropped an album that was truth. No fucking... Oh, you're you're a pussy, uh, fucking, you know, it's just like subjective shit. He dropped a track with lines that are very, very objective. Things that you cannot counter, right? So, uh, at this point, Back to Back was so hot that people were going back to Charged Up. You know, kind of like a sequel and a prequel you know what I mean and so what happened was uh, Charged Up was kind of mediocre it was 0-0 when that track released but because Back to Back was so damn fire it was all of a sudden 2-0 people were like fuck it we're giving Drake that extra point that we didn't give him before in Charged Up and at this point, it was like, yo, Drake dropped two diss tracks before you can even respond. That's fucking crazy. Not only that, it was a cold and calculated move. Drake released this track with an album cover of uh, Toronto winning the World Series. And it was back to back, right? This was back-to-back winning World Series and they beat Philadelphia like I said Drake is from Toronto Meek Mill is from Philadelphia right not only that Toronto was playing Philadelphia that day in baseball now you tell me if that's not cold and calculated what is that shit right there alone just what went into planning this non half ass diss this shit was fucking fire this shit was crazy every fucking thing you had to listen to it multiple fucking times to fully grasp the fire that was in this track this was some Shakespeare shit this was some Romeo and Juliet shit a type of story where you had to listen to over and over again just to fully grasp what the hell this was in a sense this was a masterpiece this was art of our time people might be saying oh oh, this dude this cat's dick riding this dude's biased this dude is over exaggerating no I'm not this shit was crazy and uh, the response from the social media world is a testament to how fire this track is okay Back to back, read the fucking lyrics if you haven't. Just break this shit, listen to it multiple times, break it down, and fully grasp what Drake is trying to say. Because there's a lot of shit that goes in there into that track that you know kind of just goes over the heads of a lot of listeners. You have to listen to it multiple times, all the way down to the artwork. It's like there's so much shit behind it. Right, so back to back was fire. This shit was in fucking insane. Social media is making memes. Drake has won. Um, Meek Mill, rest in peace. 
this shit was the memes were crazy at this point and you know Drake the non-thug the the rapper that sings was all of a sudden at the top you know he was he was on the mountaintop now as of this moment you know people are saying that he's gonna drop one more to end it all as if it's not already over right but I'm gonna go into that a little bit later so Drake drops his bomb this fucking Hiroshima bomb the whole world is talking about it it is trending everybody's like fuck man they're going on to Meek Mill's social media saying like yo you lost you know no matter what you say no matter how fire your diss track your response is it's not going to be as good as Drake's because number one it took you way too damn long to respond dude has already dropped two diss tracks on your ass and number two you started the beef how are you going to start the beef and you don't even have a diss track to respond after days right the charged up and back to back were released and in between were days in between all right so so meek mill and nikki goes to tour in canada toronto and all of a sudden after the diss track meek mill is closing huh how is meek mill closing people didn't come to see meek mill people came to see nikki all right you're an opening act now all of a sudden you're closing right after drake dropped that diss track it showed psychologically that he he was got he's gotten to mentally he was like fuck man i gotta save face i'm gonna I'm a go in afterwards right now nikki's a down ass chick to be able to say hey fuck it i'm gonna open for this dude you know straight up wifey material i respect that you know just very very supportive of her man okay so when they were in toronto meek mill fucking closed the show and they showed video of the audience no one gave a fuck about meek mill no one knew the lyrics people came to see nikki all right why is your ass closing right not only that but they booed him they booed him off stage now going to toronto the that is the perfect time to drop a diss track right you're in his hometown and there's nothing that is more disrespectful than shitting on someone in their own home okay so if you were to drop a diss track for the maximum fucking disrespectfulness the maximum power you were supposed to do it at his home no he did not drop it it was a perfect moment it was golden opportunity you know especially when you're down to zero and the last track that your opponent dropped straight up you know was crazy fucking murked your ass so you have at this point you're doing damage control and so you want to drop a diss track with maximum effect and to do that you are supposed to do it in his hometown so he let that opportunity slip and then finally comes the diss track wanna know finally Meek Mill is about to diss the shit out of Drake at this point uh, the audience is curious but at the same time it's in the minds of many in the minds of the people around the world there was no saving maybe there's damage control if your track is fire but at this point Drake has already won right um you need to come out with like straight up fire for people to come back on your side so I put this track on and it starts out with the fucking Undertaker's theme music I'm like ooh okay this shit's about to be fire you know he's about to come back you know it was a it was a is almost like foreshadowing it's like yo this is like straight up what's gonna happen to you drake 
This is some Undertaker shit. Uh, the track goes on and is decent. It's all right, but at the same time, by this time, the world was kind of like they kind of just didn't really care. They just want to listen to it to see if he had bars. At before listening to the track, the world has already made up their minds. It was over. It was, it was too damn late. Timing is everything, and you released your first track long after Drake dropped his second track okay so uh I listened to his track and uh I mean it was mediocre at best you know a lot of people were shitting on him saying like his shit was super whack and it kind of was you know especially considering the time that he had to write this track you know he was on tour he had that excuse but you also had the excuse of x amount of days since drake released his diss track so so it was mediocre at best and it was not anywhere near the level of back to back so people were shitting on him like crazy to this day people are shitting on him you know and at this point, you kind of got to take a step back and play out this whole scenario. How did we get to this point? He started by having ego issues. Like they said, there's an old saying that goes, if you cannot control the ego, the ego will control you. And when the moment the ego controls you, it's game over. You know, you're going to you're going to hurt yourself more than you're going to help yourself. In life, in everything you do, the ego is something that you need to control. Because if you do not control it, if you do not have humility, eventually you will pay the price. You know, you need to stay humble at all times. So Meek Mill thinks he's hot shit. Uh, he th- he's thinking that record sales is a testament to his fan base. And during that time, he had the hottest record. So, you know, his ego got a little bit inflated. And he was like, fuck it, man. I'm going to call this fool out for not shouting me out. All right. Now we've taken a step back. Let's take a, back, a step back in to where we were before. Meek Mill, what the fuck, bro? You fucked up. You could have prevented all this shit, man. You were on top of the motherfucking world. No one was fucking touching you. You had Drake on your side. You had Nicki. You had the hottest fucking album in the fucking United States. Why? I'm thinking to myself, why? You couldn't text Drake? You couldn't give him, given him a call and be like, yo, bro, give me a shout out. I was on my G. Uh, when you get the time, is it cool if you tweet it? You couldn't give him a call? And now look at where you at. You see, that's that's life, you know. Life teaches us to be humble. You know, you could be on top of the world one moment, then the next moment, you have the whole world turn on you. And that's where Meek Mill is at right now. And it's kind of sad in a sense because it's like, you know, I'm all for a good beef. I'm all for, like, you know, diss tracks and shit. But it's never fun to see someone go from the top of the top, you know, and fall that quickly. No one likes seeing that shit. That shit is hard to watch, you know. And quite frankly, you know, I have nothing against Meek Mill. Dude is um, dating the hottest chick in the fucking game. How can you be mad at that, man? You fucking won, man. You fucking won. You made it out of Philly. You made it out of fucking all that battle rapping bullshit. And you were on top of the motherfucking world. People were eating out of your hands. People thought you were fucking hot. You were relevant. Alright. 
and sometimes you need to be humble in those situations sometimes it's really it, hindsight is 2020 i mean this could be the best lesson for him right um but he dropped one to know and it was you know mediocre at best to this day the world is still shitting on him and uh, we could be a few hours away from Drake, uh, Drake dropping his three-peat, which is what people are calling it. Um, you know, some inside sources, I don't know if it's confirmed or not, but they're saying that Drake is going to release three-peat to end it all. And here's my, here's my opinion on that. It's like if you drop three-peat, is it a good idea or a bad idea? Because, hear me out back to back was already hot fire it was a 10 out of 10 the world was very receptive of this track your lines were really good you came out with all your aces what do you really have left in the tank right you might still have some ammo right but sometimes it's not the best thing to go all out because if you drop another album or I mean if you drop another track and it's not on the level of back to back you kind of lose a point right you lose a point because you know people already put you to the standard you know that's where the bar was raised you have to go above it and that's the only way you can fucking drop the repeat do not drop the repeat if this is not on par with back to back okay Make sure you have the bars. Make sure that you come with the fire. Now, if you're dropping this album, what good is it going to do? I mean, Meek Mill has already lost. Are you going to make him lose even more? I mean, what's going on here, right? It's like, obviously, I want to hear it. But uh, from Drake's standpoint, it's like, do you want to do it? And uh, some some people might be like, yeah, do it. You know, send a message out. Just be like, hey, you don't want to fuck with Drake because if you fuck with Drake, this is what's going to happen to you. You're going to get dissed the fuck up. You know, you're not, you're going to have the whole world turn on you if you fucking diss Drake. Okay. So here's my, here's where I come to my conclusion it's like do you drop it It, how much benefit weigh the pros and cons how much benefit is it really gonna do for you are you gonna get more fans i mean what what's the positives that can come out of this and this is strictly from a career standpoint from a from a standpoint of like what purpose is it really gonna serve right you can drop it but make sure that it is fire make sure that it is on par or if not beyond back to back okay now what about meek meals meek meals i'm just kidding it's meek mill i know it's meek mill all right so at this point if i was meek i would continue doing what i'm doing i would continue to go on tour I would continue to, you know, just, I would lay low. Fuck all that Instagram shit. Fuck all that Twitter shit. Because right now, tweeting and, like, posting pictures isn't really helping your cause. At this moment, it's better to lay low, continue doing the tour. Fuck it. You know, you're opening, but so what? You know? Everyone fucking opens before they get super popular. Drake opened at one point, right? Right? I'd say continue opening, you know, get that money. And while you're doing that, on the side, have an album, a diss album dedicated to Drake. Imagine that's the only way you win. At this point, this is the only way you can win is have an album. Because here's the thing with the album, right? If we've learned anything from Lil Wayne, before Lil Wayne got hot, he dropped shit ton, shit ton of mixtapes. 
there was so much music that was coming out from Lil Wayne that there was bound to be a couple tracks that people liked right there was bound to be a couple fire tracks and here's the thing with the rap game it's very subjective you know still to this point some people think that Meek Mill won against Drake Meek Mill took the W right while most of the most of the world think that Drake won but some people still think that Meek Mill won and that's the that's the game that comes with the game of the rap the hip hop game right it's very subjective that's why i'm saying drop an album cuz the moment you drop an album there are bound to be you know one or two tracks that this person might like but this person hates but this person likes these couple tracks you know when you drop a catalog of music there's bound to be one or two tracks that people are going to like and chances are if they like it it's going to be fire tracks right um but you want to make sure that it's fire you know take your time don't even announce it just drop it one day just drop it one day without telling anyone no promotion just tweet it out one time just let it be and let the people let the masses through word of mouth download your shit that is how you win this is strategy right here man this is some drake level strategy you know you want to think long and hard you want to make sure it's cold and calculated you came out with that undertaker shit that shit was not cold and calculated that was some like i'm gonna just write some shit you know you need some cold and calculated shit if you have to lock yourself in the cabin if you want this w that's what you're gonna have to do this is some shit right here um you know drop a diss album who has ever done that shit nobody now here's it it's a double edged sword but at this point you're kind of you're kind of 30 you know your diss track kind of went against you and drake is thinking about dropping three peat so you might be 40 at this point what else is there for you to lose you know it's 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 a win-win situation unless you drop an album of mediocre tracks, you know, unless all your tracks are just whack. So what you need to do is just fucking just do it, man. Just take your time with it. Don't tell anyone. There is no pressure because the moment you tell people there's pressure. So if you don't tell anyone, there is no pressure. Don't tweet about it. Just do this behind closed doors and fucking just write. Just keep writing. Do your research first. Do your re- to make a diss track, you need to do your research first and then and then make the lines as you go. You know, your your wanna know diss track, I can tell you did very little research. There is very few disses in the track, and that's kinda what made it mediocre. So that's my opinion. As of today, August 3rd, 2015. As of now, the three peat or the third diss track from Drake has not released yet. So uh, we're kind of in the stage of like, is he going to drop it or is this a rumor? Uh, But rest assured, I will have a second episode to this a part two part three if that track drops with that being said yo welcome to the jackhammer radio show i am your host jackhammer himself jh y'all stay tuned and uh it's gonna be interesting to see how this shit played out um make sure you subscribe Make sure you share it with your friends. I'm trying to make some of this YouTube money too. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm broke right now. I ain't got no job. But shit, this is a hobby of mine. So I wanted to give my opinion. You know, and sometimes the uh, and anim- fucking being anonymous, you're able to speak your soul and give it your all into. Um, into like commentary because it's like 
make you feel more safe and that i guess that can be a double-edged sword sometimes you know because sometimes the haters get real crazy with it um you know sometimes haters just go overboard you know but uh always you know having this is uh good to voice yourself you know good to just speak your mind but anyways like i said welcome to the jackhammer radio show this is trash radio this is garbage radio but it's sort of like fucking reality tv you know people love watching uh fucking keeping up with the kardashians these reality tvs these shows are not going to benefit your life whatsoever but it's entertaining it keeps your mind off of all your troubles it's a good escape all right so it's a good escape for me too so we're we're a community here so we want to help each other out so with that being said stay tuned for more episodes and i'm uh see you on the next episode motherfuckers